Hey, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's topic, which is a map tour of Longmont, Colorado. So if you are thinking of moving to Longmont or just curious about Longmont, then this is the place to be today. My name is Haley Bartlett with iGo Realty. I live in the surrounding areas of Longmont and do a lot of real estate business here, helping buyers and sellers. I love it when they call, text, book an appointment with me from one of these videos. So if you are curious about Longmont, I would love to help you. Now let's get on with this map tour of Longmont. So today we are going to cover schools and events and restaurants and a little bit of real estate at the end. So let's start the tour, just kind of showing you where Longmont sits. So as you can see, we have some main um, highways and interstates here. So this is Interstate 25, one of the busiest interstates in the area. And you can access Longmont from 119 or Highway 66 from 25. You can also get off at 52 and kind of make your way through there. But these are probably the most direct and easiest access. We have 287, which runs up to Loveland, Fort Collins area, and then down into Louisville, Lafayette. And then we have the what we call the Diagonal Highway, so 119, which will take you into Boulder. So people that work in Boulder tend to live in this Southwest Longmont area. It is more affordable than Boulder when it comes to house prices, but as you can see, it gives you super easy access to get in and out of Boulder. So I have helped a few clients buy in this Southwest area that work in Boulder. All right, so that's kind of your location. We are about 35 to 40 minutes from Denver, about 25 to 30 minutes from Fort Collins, and then as you can see, about 10 to 15 minutes from Boulder. So it's not a bad location. I would keep in mind if you're going to work in Denver that 25 traffic can be quite terrible sometimes if there's an accident. If it's snowing, if it's raining, people don't drive very well in the rain here. We can handle snow, but rain is a whole other story. Um, but yeah, you get an accident on 25 and it can be a bit of a pain. Okay, so let's kind of just take a quick look around Longmont just to give you an idea of what's going on. So right here, smack in the middle is Main Street. This is where you're going to find a lot of restaurants, the library is there, uh, oh, cheese importers, delicious cheese, and um, if you like charcuterie boards, that kind of thing, you can also find, they call themselves a gourmet grocery store, you can also find some European goodies in cheese importers. But this main street kind of has all of those restaurants, and also you're going to find parades and events and things happen along main street. If we go over to the southwest area, you have a lot going on over here, but this is where your biggest, your bigger box stores are going to be. So Target, Home Depot, King Supers, Hobby Lobby, Sam's, and Village of the Peaks is over here, which is a big shopping center with the movie theater, Gold's Gym. So you kind of have all of that in this southwest area. And then to the east, it is kind of a little more... It, just opens up, uh, but you have Union Reservoir and you also have the State Park over here, which we'll talk a bit more, talk about a bit more in a minute. So let's look right now at the restaurants in Longmont, just to give you an idea of places to go and eat. So as you can see, there's a concentrated amount here along that main street, like I was talking about. Pump House Brewery, a great place if you are looking for some craft beer, a burger, it's very casual. There's a big patio seating and there's also some um, games and things in there for the kids. So I know a couple of my friends with smaller kids like to go hang out there because the kids can occupy themselves for a little bit. Lucille's Creole Cafe, so you have some Cajun Creole food there. This one, uh, I'm pretty sure Lucille's is only open for breakfast and lunch. Yeah, closes at two. Martini's Bistro over here. I actually haven't eaten there yet. It's a fine dining restaurant apparently, probably why I haven't eaten there yet. 
Um, the Roost has some great kind of modern American fare. Mike O'Shea's is your Irish restaurant. Sorry, I had to think about that. But you want some bangers and mash and things like that, which I do sometimes because it's part of my heritage. Uh, that's a great place to go. Tangerine, another breakfast and brunch place. Hefe's has some great tacos and they also make some good margaritas. Tortugas has seafood. And I was talking about cheese importers before. Uh, prior to COVID, they had a restaurant that made some yummy kind of lunch foods. I'm not sure if they reopened that or not. I probably need to go and check it out. So those are some Main Street restaurants, then we get off Main Street and you have Caprice Trattoria, which is yummy, Texas Roadhouse, so your chain there, Oscar Blues, which is a brewery. They make some really good beer, but they also have Cajun Creole type foods, more lunch, dinner. Suelos is a very unique place to go. I'm going to put some photos up here, but if you like a tiki bar, this is the place to go. Their cocktails are yummy. They have Hawaiian style food. The bar area is like a hull of a boat. So it's like you're in a boat. Um, and then the outer kind of dining area has that more tiki bar feel. So that this has been a great addition to Longmont for sure. And then we have our breweries. So Left Hand Brewing Company, most people know Left Hand. Uh, they also just opened, I think like two years ago, their garden area in summer. So Thursdays through Sundays, you can go sit in the garden area. You can take the dogs, the kids. You can take it just yourself and um, go sit and have a drink in the sunshine. They do have some shade, but you got to kind of get there early to get that. Weeby Brewing's another great spot. Really solid beers. They have food trucks that come and they have um, shelter outside or a small area inside and you can take the dogs with you and you can sit inside with the dogs which is why it's one of our favorite places to go 300 suns brewing oh delicious food there along with your beer and if you come out a little east here there are a couple of restaurants that kind of sit out here on the outer side collision brewing is great their food is yummy i'm waiting for their summer watermelon poke bowl salad to come back because they had that last year and it was delicious they have some good beers and then outwell brewing has more of a german style brewing and eats so there's plenty of other restaurants in here too like i can't go past without mentioning georgia boys which is my favorite barbecue as you can see there's plenty of places to eat in longmont if you're looking for some good food so that covers our restaurant area let's look at some things to do in longmont so we have union reservoir which i mentioned before but you can take your uh, sups you can take your kayaks there is a beach area that the kids can swim in that they have roped off. You can also take your dog. There's a dog beach area and the dogs can be in the water or on the beach. It is $8 per car uh, or you can get a season pass or yeah, although you can be in there in winter too. You just don't want to swim and stuff, but it, it I think it's around $65 for that season pass. So if you're going to go quite a few times, it might be worth getting the season pass. But that can be a fun spot to hang out. We have a state park right here, St. Vrain State Park. This is great. I've spent quite a bit of time in here. So you'll find walking trails. You can do a, a couple of miles on those trails. There are uh, little lakes and ponds in here. And you can, I have not yet, but you can paddleboard, I believe, in these ponds or kayak. Definitely fishing and ice fishing happens there in the winter. That's kind of fun to see and then there's a lot of bird life in this state park so that's a good little spot they also have camping but with 25 there it can be pretty noisy uh, to camp there just a heads up on that one and then out on this side we have McIntosh Lake which is actually a free place to stand up paddleboard and kayak and you can't swim in it they don't let you swim so no swimming uh, but you can stand up paddleboard or kayak in Macintosh. And sometimes it does get busy there because it is the free 
one. So then we have our parks like Golden Ponds Park, which is very pretty and great views back over the mountains. On this side, near, back near Collision, you have Sandstone Ranch, which has a huge playground, splash pad, soccer fields. There's trails that wrap through here too, so this can be a great place to walk. And we actually have the St. Vrain um, Greenway that goes through Longmont, through Golden Ponds. It kind of wraps all the way along Left Hand and then St. Vrain River. You see here the bike and foot trail. I'll put some photos. We were just there the other day. The river was overflowing its banks, which I have not seen yet. So that was kind of fun. We had a lot of rain in the spring and it wraps all the way down to sandstone. So it is, I believe, an eight mile trail and then it does connect on. I know we have taken the trail through all the way up through here and kind of out towards Boulder. So that is a great thing to do if you bike or you want to run or even just walk. We just took the dog for a walk out there the other day. You have your golf courses. So City of Longmont, Twin Peaks Golf Course, and then you have Fox Hill Golf Course on this side. And up here we have Ute Creek. So three golf courses for you to play on if you enjoy golf. And then, of course, just a short drive away is up into the mountains uh, to Estes Park, Lions, and those great areas. So those are some of the things you might do if you're living in Longmont. Let's hit schools up. So I can't, as a realtor, I can't give you direct um, advice about schools. I can direct you to like this is greatschools.org. It kind of lets you know about all the schools in the Longmont area and there are a lot. It gives you some ratings and reviews on the schools. So this can be a great place to go to look at school ratings, to look for schools. The schools are varied and have different programs. So I know the high schools, St. Frayne Valley School District is the school district. And the high schools have some great programs where your kids can get college credits or even finish a two year um, you know, college degree along with high school to help you save money because the school district pays for it. So that can be, they have a couple of those programs. St. Vrain School District is open enroll, so you can enroll in any school as long as there is space, and I do believe you have to do it by a certain time. So you wanna to go to the St. Vrain Valley School District or SVVSD website and look at the schools that you might be interested in. That website will list the programs that they have as well. But we also have Christian schools, uh, for the kiddos, if that's the way you want to go, a Baptist school down here. You can see all the elementary schools, public elementary schools throughout the area. We do have a charter school in Longmont as well here, Twin Peaks Classical Academy. You'll see the middle school, one of the middle schools here, Hygiene Elementary School out that way. So there is plenty to choose from, and then you can head out of Longmont too and you have Mead High and Middle School in this area and then Frederick more over to this area you have Frederick High. So there's plenty of school options you know check out the ratings if that's something that concerns you and check out the SVVSD website to get an idea of what the school is running. All right, let's look at events and things to do in Longmont. And here's an example of what the calendar looks like. There's always plenty going on. <laughs> so we have happy hour to tours, free outdoor concerts. Um, this is a silent disco, live music, movie night in the backyard, music Thursdays. So there's plenty going on. And then we have the annual events that happen. So the Halloween parade is a big one. I love it. I always go. Um, kids and dogs parade down the street with their parents. And it's just awesome seeing all the different costumes. You have marching bands from the local schools 
and that one is one of my favorites. Longmont Lights is the Christmas festival and it includes holiday lights and bonfires and ice skating and then there is also a parade on the Friday night so that's usually at 5 p.m. It is a light up parade and it is fun as well. I like to be at that one every year. So those are two of the bigger ones. There's also a Veterans Day Parade, which they haven't listed here on Veterans Day. My son plays in the marching band for Frederick High, and he's often in that parade. And they were having the Day of the Dead Parade at some point. Not sure if they're still doing that, but there's that parade as well. On certain nights throughout summer, they'll open up kind of Main Street and there's all kinds of shopping and art walks and things that go on there too. So you can see there's plenty going on in Longmont, plenty of festivals, plenty of parades and um, things to do in Longmont, which reminds me, I want to go back. There's a couple more things to do that I didn't bring up. So let's just bring this map back up. Sorry, flipping over here so you have the city of Longmont Rec Center here too which is great for swimming if you want swim lessons if you want a gym if you want workout classes that all happens here at the city of Longmont Rec Center it is a cool the slide kind of goes outside and back in so the kids love that and then the Longmont Museum is a great place to go if you want to see the history of Longmont. So I just wanted to kind of go back and wrap around those because I forgot those. And then Dickens Farm Nature Area is another place. In summer, you can do tubing there. So you get the kids in the little tube and they float down the river. Now this year I wouldn't do it because the river is kind of rushing and crazy and I wouldn't even let my teen do it because he's probably going to go way too far and I'm going to have to go catch him. So that's another few things to do in Longmont and I'm sure I left some out. Let's take a quick look at the housing market in Longmont. So we are just going to look at how many houses are on the market right now and where those prices kind of sit so that you can see what's going on. Get this up. Sorry, I'm going to move my recording box out of the way. This will just give you a brief idea. And then I am going to start doing the monthly recap of the market. So you'll see those videos start coming up towards the beginning of each new month. And so it'll be the beginning of July and I'll be looking at June. So right now in Longmont, we have 266 homes available and that includes condos and townhomes as well. So let's go to the results. So you'll see the most expensive here is 24 million. Just to give you an idea of what that looks like, why not? Why not take a look? Loading the map. Okay, we want to look at the house. Okay, so you can see here, I think it said it was on 10 acres. It's 13,284 square feet. It is out on the beautiful east side of Longmont there. Look like Rabbit Mountain. Uh, this place looks like you could run a pretty cool business from it. <laughs> I think that's what I would choose, chose, choose to do with that. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the most expensive house that is for sale in Longmont right now. And then let's go and look on the cheaper side, which is going to likely be a condo. There's no, not even any photos. Okay, so this one, 315. The condo, this is close to Union Reservoir, which I've shown you before, 939 square feet. So this kind of gives you an idea of how pricing sits in Longmont. And then if we go 
back and kind of go, let's go in the middle somewhere. Not the most expensive, not the cheapest. So around the average kind of home price of $559, you get something like this. And this is an older house in Longmont Estates. So it needs some renovating. It needs some work, as you can see. And it is listed at $559, but it has been on the market 41 days. So that just gives you a quick idea of the real estate market. Like I said, you know, like and subscribe. I will be doing the updates on the Longmont real estate market. If you have any questions about living in Longmont, um, if you have any questions about anything we talked about or housing, like I said, we get lots of text, emails, calls from people just like you and love chatting with you. So just let me know how I can help Haley Bartlett with iGo Realty and look forward to seeing you again soon. See ya.